In this tutorial, we will look at the SSD1306 OLED I2C display and how to connect it to the Raspberry Pi Pico. We will look at the library that will allow us to use functions to make it easy to work with and control the display. In our first example, we will display the onboard temperature sensor of the Raspberry Pi Pico and look at how to write simple text. Then in the second example, we will look at how to display an image or create a simple animation. If you are new here, subscribe to Nerdcave for more tutorials on a Raspberry Pi Pico. Let's first take a look at the display we will use today. This OLED display is a monocolor 0.96 inch display with 128 by 64 pixels. The display does not require a backlight which results in a nice contrast in dark environments. Additionally, its pixels consume only energy when they are on, so the display consumes less power compared with other displays. The model we are using only has 4 pins and communicates with the Pico using the I2C communication protocol. To connect the display to the Pico is very easy, as we will only need to make 4 connections. Just follow the schematic diagram to make the necessary connections. I decided to use I2C0 using GPIO pins 16 and 17 to make the wiring more neat. Once you are done making all the connections, we can go to Fonny or your favorite IDE and write some code. I have included all the code and files in my GitHub repository if you want to follow along. Open the ssd130.py file and copy all the code. In Fonny, create a new file, paste the code and save it to the Pico as ssd130.py. Repeat this process for the file temperature.py, which will display the onboard temperature of the Pico. Let's look together at the temperature.py to understand how does this code work. In this block of code, we import all the Python modules and libraries we will need, and most importantly, the SSD1306 library. We then set the width and height of our display, which is 128 by 64 pixels. We then create a variable i2c to initialize our I2C communication between the Pico and the display. We then create a variable display to set it equal to our library to initialize our display, passing it the width, height and I2C communication. To test if the display is working, let's set all the pixels to on and show it by saying display.fill and we make it 1. The screen should light up completely. If it doesn't, check your connections again and make sure that you have saved the library correctly and imported it correctly to your Pico. In this block of code, we create a function read temp. We create a variable sensor temp to read the internal temperature sensor on the analog to digital converter on channel 4. We create a conversion factor and multiply it with the values we are reading. And using the formula in a data sheet, we calculate the temperature. We then do some basic formatting and create a variable to show the temperature with the formatted string and return the string. We create an endless loop. And using display, we will call the text method, pass it a string with our starting x and y position, which will be the top left corner of the display. We then create a variable and set it equal to the temperature function to receive the temperature string. And then using the text method again, we can display the string and we make sure our string is moved down 14 pixels, not to overlap the string of example 1. We then use the show method to show the output of the string on the display and then we use the full method and set it to zero to ensure the screen is cleared before the next reading is shown. Uploading this code to the Pico, the onboard temperature will be displayed and a new temperature will be taken every two seconds. For the following example, we will look at how to display an image. To display an image on a one bit per pixel monochrome display, we need to get our image into the same format. The best way to do this is using image manipulation software such as Photoshop or GIMP. These allow you to downsample an image to monochrome while maintaining detail by adding dither or other adjustments. To follow along with example 2, you'll need to download the following two software, GIMP and Inferent View. In my GitHub repository, download the Pikachu.png, open the Pikachu picture in GIMP. The first step will then be to crop the image to the correct dimension which should be 128 by 64 pixels. Right click, go to image and select scale image. I will make the height 64 pixels and let the width adjust to keep the correct aspect ratio. Now our image will fit on the screen, so let's just make sure that our canvas is the correct width again. Right click and on canvas size, set the width to 128 and the height to 64 pixels. And move the picture to the middle of the canvas. 
or where you want it to be. Now click on the image tab and go to the mode and select indexed. Select use black and white one bit palette to enable one bit per pixel mode. The color differing setting are best chosen by trial and error depending on the image being converted. However, turning off tethering entirely is often best for images or solid color blocks. Once the image is converted to black and white, you can save it to a file. We will save the image as a BPM file format, a portable bitmap, and save the file as raw mode. Now back in the GitHub repository, copy the code under image py, create a new file for me and paste the code. Let's go through this code together. In this block of code, same as before, we import all the necessary modules and libraries and set up the I2C communication and initialize our display with the SSD1306 library. Before we look at how to import an image, let's first look at the portable bitmap format. It consists of a regular header, separated by new lines, then the image data. The header starts with a number indicating the image format, the second line is a comment, and the third line is the dimensions. Then the final new line, you will get all the binary data. The data is stored as a 1 bit per pixel stream, 1 indicating a pixel that is on, and 0 indicating an off pixel. Back to the code, we need to enter the name of our image, and upload it to the Pico. In Fonny, click on view and files. This will show your computer storage and the Pico flash memory at the bottom. Locate the portable bitmap image, right click on it and select upload. This will upload the image to the Pico. The portable bitmap data is in the correct format for the use to wrap the data in a byte array. We will use this data we are reading to create a frame buffer and plot it immediately. But first we skip the header region three times by read line three times before we get to the data block. Now that we have the image data in fbuff, we can display it to the display frame buffer using the blit method. This is Seb's coordinate at which to blit. Now if we upload this code to the Pico, we will have an image of Pikachu on our display. Our last example will be this Minecraft animation. Using any free animated icon website, we can download the file as a GIF and strip it into frames to upload it to the Pico to display the image back to create an animation. For this example, open icons8.com and search Minecraft and select the type to be animated. Now click on the first icon and press download and make sure that the format is GIF. Our next step is to split the GIF into frames. For that, we will use an online tool easygif.com, so make sure to go to split and animated GIF splitter. Now upload your Minecraft GIF. The dimension of this file is 120 by 120 pixels, so to ensure it fits on our screen, let's resize it to 64 by 64 pixels. You might want to play around with the resize method, as some will not give a good result. After we have resized the image, we can click on split. This will split your image into frames, which we can download as a zip file. Now unzip this file to your computer, and now we will use Irfan View. Go to file and select batch conversion rename and navigate to your frames and add all your frames. Select the output destination, ensure the output format is portable bitmap and untick the use advanced options. For the name pattern, make it image with a hash sign afterwards. This will save our images as image 1 to image 28. You can now click on start batch. Here we have our 28 images ready to be uploaded to the Pico. In Fonny, upload this whole folder to the Pico. Now back to the GitHub repository, copy all the code under animation.py and create a new file in Fonny and paste the code. We will create a list to store our images, update the folder name and the number of images which will be Minecraft and 28. This time in our frame buff it will be 64 by 64. We create an endless loop to go through all our frames stored in images and we will offset the starting x coordinate by 32 to get our images to display in the middle of the display. We use a short delay of 0.01 seconds between each frame. Now upload this to the Pico and you will have a simple animation. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and if you have any questions leave a comment and I will see you in the next video.